Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. I'm really excited. I'm going to be doing a manual swap in my E46 BMW that you see behind me. I got all the parts in a junkyard recently and I spent about 350 bucks there on all the major components. Then I spent another hundred dollars at the local parts house on the various bushings and the rubber parts in order to get the the shift lever feel to be you know factory original again um, anyway i'm going to go over all the parts that you need to grab if you want to do this project yourself so let's get started so the whole parts list is is honestly not that much especially if you're getting it from a junkyard you know because that's the great thing from the junkyard, you know, certain things that the junkyard's not really going to know to charge for. Whereas if you bought it on eBay, you might not necessarily get that part with it. For instance, like, you know, the, the Gubo on the back of the, the transmission here, along with the bolts and everything. If you buy the transmission from eBay, it might not come with that. Then you'd have to buy the Gubo. You'd have to buy the, the bolts as well as the nuts and that just that kind of stuff just adds up but that's part of the transmission to the guy in the selling it to you in the junkyard so he's really not gonna they don't have a separate line item for that so it's really great and also you know the clutch release fork i didn't get charged for that for some reason um, i did take the throw out bearing as well but i'm going to be replacing that anyway um, but you know it's like little things like that um, so we got the mount again the mounts not gonna come with it if you buy it on eBay You know, that's just another thing you gotta be paying for this is also a little um, this this ties into the um, exhaust and then Your transmission mounts you might want to change these um, If yours are toast if you've never changed them before these ones were Really good. These these look like brand new again. You also want to change the gubo if yours is all trashed so we've got like the shifter boot, the shifter knob, the little rubber that goes under that. <clears throat> this is the shift linkage. So um, there are some replacement parts that there are some parts you want to replace on these. This right here, um, I forget exactly what it's called. I have a new one. You can see how kind of bendy this one is. And, and then you'll notice the play in here. There's kind of like a, a plastic bushing inside of there. Definitely gonna replace that. And then this right here, this rubber bushing in here, I'm also gonna replace this as well. I got a new one of those. This part's optional. Um, I would definitely replace this and I would replace the plastic bushing in here for sure. If you're gonna do anything, you wanna get that plastic bushing. So for our consumables, as I'm calling them, again, this is the, the part on the back of the shift fork. This is a new pilot bearing, new throw out bearing. We've got the, sh the part of the shifter bushing that goes in there. This is the part, the white part that goes in there. You saw that earlier. Here's the, the clutch alignment tool. Now this is actually a part that most people wouldn't think to replace, but it actually goes on the end of the transmission where the shift fork bolts up to it or hooks up to it. And it's just the little part that's gonna connect right here. There's a little bushing on the inside of it that kind of gets a little bit of play in it. There's also this plastic disc inside which kind of disintegrates over time. So this is not something that uh, ordinarily pe people would think to replace, but it's actually going to give you back a little bit more of your, uh, your shifter feel. Now up here, we've got the clutch and brake pedal assembly, as well as a new accelerator pedal. Now the automatic accelerator pedal actually has a step down in it, whereas the manual doesn't. It's just a smooth travel all the way down. So this is optional, but definitely recommend grabbing that. You know, it's again, it's something that is easier to grab when you're in the junkyard. It doesn't cost as much as if you're gonna have to buy a new one or even a used one off of eBay. So definitely recommend going the junkyard route for this. So with your whole sh brake pedal and clutch pedal assembly, you're gonna need a different brake pedal because the automatic pedal is wider. So you're gonna need to change that. You actually don't need to change this bracket. The bracket is the same. You would just be able to pull the old brake pedal off and put the new one on. Um, there are two designs of clutch switches in here. You can see there's, there's one switch up here and there's another switch down here. This is, I guess, the old style design. We're gonna have different harnesses for each one. You'll notice that I also grabbed the harnesses with the factory connectors, another great thing about the junkyard. Uh, the newer style is actually gonna have a different uh, master cylinder. There's gonna be a little, um, there's gonna be a little sensor, a little clutch switch that's, uh, I think it's like a magnetic sensor so it can sense when the piston is in or out. That's gonna be a four wire 
uh, connector on that. Whereas these two clutch switches are going to be three wire sensors. You can see I've got, you know, three wires here, three wires there. Um, the wiring is technically going to be the same in that um, for each one of these three switches, you know, there's going to be one power wire, one ground wire, and one signal wire. So there's just one signal wire for this switch, one signal wire for the switch down here. Again, power and ground, right? And then one signal wire. We're going to wire the powers and grounds into the power and ground for this brake switch right here. This harness we're already going to have with the car. So, you know, I won't be using this, but I have it here for illustration purposes. You know, again, with this one, it's got a power and ground and then two signal wires. So we'll just be wiring, you know, the two power, the two powers from our two clutch switches together and the grounds for our two clutch switches to this ground right here. That's how we'll be doing the wiring. And if you have that four wire switch, then you would just wire one of the powers and one of the grounds to your clutch switch and, or to your brake pedal switch. And then you're going to take uh, the, one of the signal wires and connect it up to the ECU. The other si um, signal wire is going to go to the EWS, which is the, uh, I think it's the alarm module. Now, uh, so like I said, if you have that four wire switch. It's going to be a different master cylinder because it's going to have a little thing where that switch can attach to the side of it. This line actually goes up to the, the brake reservoir. There's no separate clutch reservoir. We're just going to cut. There's a little nipple sticking off of the existing brake reservoir that's capped. And we're just going to cut it with scissors and plug this into the side. Make sure when you're taking this from the junkyard, there's a little clip on the back here that you're going to have to pop out with a screwdriver. Make sure you don't lose that clip. Otherwise, the clutch line won't stay in. So these are the two clutch lines right here. We've got the slave cylinder, which actually bolts onto the side of the transmission. You might want to replace this because they do tend to leak over time. I think this one's okay. I didn't notice any evidence of leakage or anything like that. There is a clutch delay valve inside of here that I'm actually going to remove because I guess that gives you a little bit better clutch pedal feel. We've got this other line that this line will connect to. See, this one also has a clip on it. So they're just kind of push in like that. Then there's a rubber grommet where that enters the car. And then this actually goes up behind the carpet and it's going to pop out and it's going to pop into the back of our master cylinder right there. I was also able to take the reverse switch. So I've just got the actual factory original harness. I unplugged it from inside of the electrical box, box where it goes, but I'm not going to use, be using this connector. I'll cut this and then wire them in um, in the same way you guys will probably have to wire it in. So here we have the pressure plate, the clutch disc, and the flywheel. And these are actually in pretty great shape because you can see that um, there's, not, there's not a whole lot of crazing or damage or, or wear on the pressure plate surface, the clutch disc itself is actually still really thick. You can see that the rivets are actually pretty deep on these, on this, which means that this clutch was probably replaced at some point in this car's life, in the life of the car that I took it from. So here is the flywheel. Now this is actually a dual mass flywheel. There's one mass here. There's one mass here. They're designed to move relative to one another. There's designed to be a little bit of free play in them, so as you can see. So that doesn't mean it's bad. There's, it's supposed to have that free play. There's actually a really large spring in here and a large spring in here. It's designed to cushion one mass against the other because you know as the as the pistons move move over and and go down, they accelerate a little, and when they come up, they slow down a little. That creates a little bit of an oscillation in the crankshaft. And this dual mass flywheel is designed to take up those oscillations and smooth them out. What happens is over time, the springs actually wear out. They could break. There's also a bearing in between the two halves right there that could actually uh, become come a little bit loose. There is a published spec on how many degrees of free play there's supposed to be in each kind of or in each dual mass flywheel. I couldn't find the spec online, but I do happen, I, I did happen to see another video where somebody tested a brand new one of th this particular flywheel. And what he did was he counted the teeth. You know, he made a mark here and a mark here, and he kind of counted the free play. And I can just sort of eyeball the free play here with my thumb, and I can see that I've got about 
a tooth and a half worth of free play and that's how much there is when this flywheel is brand new so this one had to have been replaced you know somewhat recently so i kind of looked out on this but you should definitely if yours starts to make noise if you've got noise when you're letting off the clutch or whatever you want to check this out you want to check out what your free play is because if if your dual mass flywheel is at fault you're going to have probably a lot more than one and a half teeth two teeth worth of free play you might have three four five i, I really don't know um I think I have seen another video where somebody had like five, six before he, before he felt the spring. So that, that was pretty extreme. So, you know, each case is going to be a little different, but a lot of people like to replace the dual mass flywheel with a single mass flywheel. The problem with that is you're no longer going to have the ability to take up those oscillations and it's good. Your whole system is going to be noisier, um, definitely noisier when you put in the clutch. So, you, you know, I, I would say don't replace it with a single mass flywheel. Just get another dual mass flywheel and it's just going to last you for the, you know, the, probably the rest of the time you're going to have the car. So I took all the bolts that I could get in the course of this job, but I have almost all those bolts already on the car. The only bolts that I wouldn't have would be these eight bolts for the flywheel. The manual transmission flywheel bolts are going to be a little bit shorter. So just going to use these bolts. I'm not going to replace them. They, they don't need to be replaced. I didn't replace them last when I did my rebuild. Um, I just put new, new uh, thread sealer on them. I also bought some cloth tape. This is the cloth tape that the factory harnesses actually come installed with. Found that on Amazon. It's called Tessa wire loom harness tape. I'm also going to use these in order to do all the wiring. These are little quick connects. These just crimp around the wire. And then you've got this side that'll actually plug right into that, just plugs in. So these are great, I've got them for, you know, this is a kit that comes with all the different sizes for the different thicknesses of wire. So thick, medium, and small. I think this is like 18 to 22, 16 to 18, and then 10 to 12 or 10 to 14, whatever it is. So something else I picked up for doing the wiring on this project is I picked up some wire, some 22 gauge wire, and I picked up these Molex connectors. I'm not sure if these are, that different. I think visually they looked slightly different, but I think these are the style that are going to fit into the factory wiring harness, uh, harnesses. And then I've just bought the crimping tool for that. Just got all this stuff at Fry's, which is like my local electronics and computer store. So you're going to need to change the fluid on your manual transmission. And what you need is Pentacin MTF2 fluid. This is the OEM fluid. I was able to find this bottle at my local parts house. They only had one. And then I found this bottle at CarQuest, which is like advanced auto here. This was slightly more expensive there. Um, it, it's expensive fluid. It's like 25 to $30. Um, I don't know if this is the new bottle and this is the old style bottle or what, but these are the two different ones that you might find. You also need some brake fluid because we're going to be bleeding out the clutch. And if you have a DSC unit, which is like the newest, what you're going to have on the newest 2002 and later E46s, then you need dot four low viscosity. Honestly, you probably you probably don't need to have the low viscosity. I could probably have grabbed Super Dot 4, Pentacin Super Dot 4, and that probably would have been fine because we're not going to be bleeding out the DSC unit or the braking system itself. We're just going to be sort of uh, lowering the volume in the brake reservoir itself and then uh, taking some of the volume out of there down into the clutch. So none of that's probably none of it's actually probably going to go down into your braking systems but even still i think probably super dot four is probably going to work you know some other maintenance type stuff you want to think about during this job are engine mounts we're actually going to be lowering the engine down we're going to be rocking the engine down when we take the transmission out and put the new one back in and that's actually going to cause some stress on these engine mounts we're going to unbolt the engine mounts themselves so that we don't put too much stress on them but Basically the top part of the engine mount likes to rip out right here. This is the left side. It's actually the right side that is most prone to damage because, because of the way the engine is canted, you know, the exhaust kind of leans over to the side. And of course, all of the valve cover gaskets leak. So they're gonna leak oil and that oil is gonna drip down onto the top of the engine mount here. And it's gonna pool in this little cup right here. And that weakens the rubber over time. So when we go in, we bend the engine back 
that actually rips off this top part right here. So you're most likely, if you've never replaced your engine mounts, just go ahead and replace them. It's, it's probably easier just to get a kit of engine mounts and transmission mounts if you have to replace these things, which if you have not done them yet, you have to. And another thing you, you are gonna wanna replace while you're in there is your rear main seal. Your rear main seal, it, it, I, I don't think they really go bad, but it's good maintenance to do it. You can just get the seal, go ahead and replace it in the housing. It's pretty easy. I already have another video on it. I'll link it right up here but that's something else to get if you've never done that. And let's not forget about the most important thing, which is the drive shaft. The drive shaft for the manual is gonna be longer than the one for the automatic. So you wanna grab this whole thing. And a little tip on how to get this out, this is the differential side, and it's actually gonna sit inside of a little cup right here. So once you unbolt it, it's not just gonna fall out. And if you don't know that, you could actually have a difficult time getting this off, but you wanna bring a pry bar in and you've got these two registrations right here where you can grab and just pry it out. So there's a top tip for you. You also wanna replace or might wanna replace the center support bearing. Um, you just wanna spin that around, see how good it is. This one's fine. No noise on that one. So I'm gonna leave it. If you do want to replace your center support bearing, it's pretty easy. You just want to unbolt this fastener right here. The two drive shafts will split apart and then you can just pull off the center support bearing and pop the new one on. I would make a line between the two halves exactly where they're joined because the whole drive shaft is balanced as a unit. So you don't want to mix up the orientation of the two halves of the drive shaft. One thing you're going to want to do for your ZF five speed manual transmission is you want to replace the shift pin bushings. There are going to be three on the top here that control the first through fourth gear gates. And then there are two on the side, one for fifth gear and one for reverse. Those two are going to be the most problematic ones. Those are the ones you definitely want to replace. I have already replaced them on this transmission and I've shot a video on that. So that's gonna be coming out uh, this Sunday. And uh, just, just to let you know, Thayer Motorsports actually makes the five BMW tools, sells the, the five BMW shift pin installer tools for doing that, just in case you didn't know. So uh, I'll, put a, I'll throw a link to those on, uh, in the description where I got them on Amazon. So if you wanna go ahead and do the electric fan conversion at the same time, um, it's optional, but you can do that. Just remember to grab this piece off of the front of the radiator because this part's different and it also doesn't have the ATF cooler mounting holes on it. So, uh, you know, it, it, you don't have to do this again. It's optional. You can just leave your ATF cooler in place and just unplug the lines from it and cap them off. I forgot to grab this piece from the car in the junkyard, so I had to buy this. Something else you're going to need for this job is a transmission jack. I highly recommend this one from Harbor Freight. It's a really good one, especially for removing the automatic transmission. It weighs about 170 pounds. You don't want to try to do that on your floor jack. I tried to do that when I first took my manual, my automatic transmission out and it slid off the jack. So I would definitely not recommend doing it that way. The only downside to this jack is the, the all the way down position is actually pretty high up off the ground which means that you're gonna want jack stands that go up as high as possible. So I got a, I got four of these six ton jack stands and these actually go up about two feet. And that's about as high, or that's about how high you wanna raise your car in order to get the transmission out from under it on top of that jack without having to pull it off the jack. So I'm going to be raising the car up that high somehow. So that's everything you're gonna need in order to do the job, make it go as easy as possible. Um, stay tuned, I'm gonna be doing a automatic transmission removal video. I'm gonna, I've already got like a long form version of that video, but I'll try to do a condensed one. We'll do the clutch pedal installation and wiring video. We'll do transmission install video, and then we'll do a coding video as well, because that's the really important part, right? Anyway, um, stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, toss me a subscribe. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.